Hello viewers, and welcome to our lecture series on biological techniques. In today's lecture, we're going to look at techniques and plankton studies, the techniques that are used for the collection, preservation, and identification of uh, plankton. In this video, we'll look at the techniques for the collection of phytoplankton. Now, what are plankton? The plankton are basically minute organisms. Okay, there are minute organisms that are found drifting on the surface of the water body. The, the uh, marine and freshwater organisms, which because they are non-motile or because they are too small or too weak to swim against the current, exist in a drifting, floating state. They're usually found on the surface of the water bodies. And because they some of them are non-motor, particularly the phytoplankton and the zooplankton. Some of them are too small or too weak to swim against the water current. They drift along with the water. Where, whichever direction, any direction that the water moves to, they drift with the water. They're different from the nicktins that are able to swim actively in the water. They are unable to swim actively, so they drift with the water, okay? and they're usually found on the surface of the water body. Now, these, uh, the word plankton is derived from the Greek origin. That means uh, made to drift or wander. The word plankton is a collective name for all organisms and includes certain algae, bacteria, protozoans, crustaceans, mollusks, and cylindrates as well as representatives from almost every other animal phylum. There are some organisms that are uh, minute. Sometimes the, the larva of some organisms that are very small, they are seen, seen drifting on the water surface. And they, uh, when they become adults, they either become nicktins or benthos. All right, so plantains are usually found on the surface of the water body minute organisms. The plant-like community of plantain is called phytoplankton and the animal-like community is known as zooplankton. So all plantains that are plant-like are called phytoplankton and all plantains that are animal-like are called zooplankton. The animal-like uh, zooplankton includes the larva and pupa order of uh, minute animals. Now, the, these are pictures of the plant-like plantains that are called phytoplankton. They include the euglena, which is microscopic in the, uh, the subphylum protozoa. We have the other organisms like the uh, chlorella, the eudorina, and many others. These are typical examples of the phytoplankton. Then we we'll have the zooplankton's that have representatives from virtually all animal groups that, uh, that are minute. Uh, maybe they are, they are uh, juvenile state, they form part of the plantains. Examples are here, the, the squids, the, uh, the creels, and many others, including the jellyfishes, the minute jellyfishes, and the larva of many other aquatic animals. Uh, part of the plankton. Here we have Diphnia and others being represented, and the Cyclops too. Then we, they are far part of the zooplankton. Then we have Diphnia and the, the uh, copy posts that form part of the zooplankton. Now I want to look at the importance of plankton. The importance of plantains. Plantains serve as food to both uh, marine and freshwater ecosystems. They serve as the productive base of the marine and freshwater ecosystem, providing food for large animals and indirectly for humans whose fisheries depend upon plantains. That's the, the plantains, particularly in the food, in the aquatic food chain, the phytoplantains are being fed on by the zooplantains, which are in turn fed on by fish, smaller fish, and uh, by humans. Even the, the whales feed on zooplantains. The whales, even the whales feed on zooplantains. So 
they serve as the base. They are uh, the productive base of the of both the marine and freshwater ecosystems. Plants that constitute the primary producers of the aquatic ecosystem. The planktons also serve as bioindicators. Planktons also serve as bioindicators. What are bioindicators? Bioindicators are organisms whose presence, absence, reduction in population or increase in population tells about the state of the ecosystem. Whether the ecosystem is polluted, whether it's healthy, or about certain physical chemical parameters of the ecosystem. The plantains are very good bioindicators of aquatic pollution. When there is aquatic pollution, particularly by crude oil, the plantains are the first to be affected. So if uh, a baseline study had been conducted and it is found that when, uh, it, it, when the impact assessment is carried out, it is found that the plantains are now no longer there or the numbers increase, it's an indication that there is actually uh, pollution in an area. So they are bioindicators. Now I want to look at collection, identification, and preservation of phytoplankton. Collection, preservation, and identification of phytoplankton. Now to collect, preserve, and identify plankton, we need the following reagents. They include 10% logos iodine for preservation and also 4% formalin 2 for preservation, then we have distilled water. The apparatus includes a uh, plantain net, usually of, uh, of 50 millimeter, 50 micrometers mesh size, and the a surgery graft accounting chamber. This is a plantain net consisting of a rope, then a rim, as well as the net, and a bottle at the bottom. Okay, it's used for the collection. It's a special net for the collection of phytoplankton as well as zooplankton. Then we also have the surgery graft accounting chamber that's used instead of the microscope slide to view the plankton. We also need a drop in pipette, okay, drop in pipettes to collect samples, sub samples to place on the surgery graft accounting chamber. Then we also have a micro, we need a microscope too for the collection of plantains, then uh, 50 meter, 50 mils glass veils. 50 mils glass veils are also required for this purpose. Now, what's the procedure for the collection of plantains? First, collect plantain sample either by collecting uh, 100 cubic centimeters of surface water and preserve in 10% logos iodine. That's one method. That's one method. To collect 100 cubic centimeters of subsurface water. That's usually 0 0.2 meters into the water and to preserve in 10% logos iodine. Or you can collect the plantain sample by filtering a known volume of water, usually 1,000 cubic centimeters through the plantain net, washing the filtrate into a sample bottle and preserving the sample in 4% formalin. So where the planting net is used to tow to collect the samples, then 4% formalin is used for preservation. This is the procedure of using the planting net. You drop the planting net into the water with the boat, and then uh, while in the boat rather, and then you tow the net, okay? Now here, in this, this picture is showing how the net is being towed over a specific distance, M, and over a specific time. Okay, so the net is then towed by propelling the boat. As the boat moves forward, the net is being dragged along and as, as it moves on the surface of the water, plantains are being collected. Then after collecting the plantains, the net is then raised up, is then raised up and the contents are then placed by put into the veil. Okay, so we concentrate the sample to about 50 mils by gravity or by concentration and by centrifugation. So the sample is being concentrated, okay? The sample is being concentrated to about 50 mils by gravity, by allowing it to uh, settle at the bottom or use a centrifuge to centrifuge it so that the sample will settle at the bottom. Then 
the sample is then homogenized. You homogenize the sample by stirring or shaking. You can stir the sample or shake it so that it is well mixed. Then when it is properly mixed, you now quickly take a drop, usually 0 0.5 mils of the sample, of the, of the homogenized sample, and place on a surgery grafter counter chamber and mount under a microscope. Then with the aid of the microscope, you can now identify and enumerate the planting samples under the high power objective lens. You use a high power objective lens to view it. And you now use appropriate identification keys to properly identify the plantings. Thanks a lot for watching and please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos, more educative videos on biological techniques and other techniques.